if you were to contract bacterial meningitis, you have a 1 in 10 chance of surviving. But 6-year-old Kino the Divine was a young fighter that defied all odds, and despite getting a glimpse of heaven and life after death, managed to cling to life in the story of uplifting hope and reassurance. Being in the hospital can be a scary time for anyone, and it can be even worse if you're a child. Doctors and nurses running around, poking you with needles and taking all kinds of readings and measurements and monitors bleeping and beeping and doing all manners of things that you can't get your head around. It's understandably an intimidating experience. But despite her scary surroundings, little Kennedy Divine put on a brave face. This beautiful little six-year-old girl had contracted bacterial meningitis, a horrific disease that causes highly damaging inflammation of the membranes that surround the brain and spinal cord. As you can imagine, contracting bacterial meningitis can potentially cause you to die within a matter of days. Immediate antibiotic treatment is needed to prevent serious lasting damage or worst case scenario, a quick yet painful death. Of those lucky people who do recover, one in five of them will suffer from lifelong side effects including sight loss, hearing loss, mobility issues and brain damage. It's truly a nasty and life-changing disease for many people who end up suffering from it. Laying in a hospital bed, surrounded by family, Kennedy was close to slipping away. Her mother, father and grandmother all stood around her, holding her hands, kissing her, talking to her and reassuring her. Understandably, the poor little girl was distressed, confused and starting to hallucinate and see things that weren't there. It's an absolutely horrific and heartbreaking scene for anyone to have to endure, and we wouldn't wish it upon anyone. Kennedy's long blonde hair is tied up in a messy bun, and tears fill her eyes as she looks around, first at the tubes and wires that are attached to her, and then at her family. She's a small, terrified little girl going through something she'll never understand, something that no one should ever have to go through. But here's when something extraordinary started to happen. It was Kennedy that started speaking words of comfort and reassurance to the adults that surrounded her. While she was still clearly panicking and scared, she managed to pluck up enough courage to say kind words to her parents and even thank her nurse. Pointing to her mother, Kennedy selflessly asks, Are you hurting? To which her mother replies, No, not now. I'm happy. Her father even backs up that statement smiling, we're all happy. Kennedy, not worrying about her own condition, seems content with this answer saying, I'm happy that you're feeling better, through her short, sharp, labored breaths. She soon goes quiet and in the moment of peace she puts her tiny hands together and recites her own version of a short prayer. Now before I go to sleep, I pray the Lord my soul to keep. This seems to calm her down for a short while and the nurse administers a sedative that brings her breathing down to a more normal level. But even in this relaxed state, Kennedy still wants to clasp her hands together in prayer. She asks the Lord to let her be able to go home safely, with her family exclaiming Amen at the end. Slipping in and out of consciousness, she reassures her father that when she wakes up, I'm not going to feel worse, I'm going to feel better. She even flexes her tiny arm muscles, much to the amusement of everyone in the room with her. It's really a touching show of strength of character from Kennedy. The little girl soon starts to complain that she feels dizzy, and she asks for her mother and father's hands for support. She falls asleep and all hope seems lost. The family think that she has lost her battle and that poor Kennedy has finally succumbed to the horrible disease that is ravaging her tiny body. For a moment, her mom even prepares herself for the worst, having to bury her sweet daughter. But then Kennedy shocks everyone, including the doctors. But after several long moments, her eyes suddenly pop back open and she exclaims, I love God, I love Jesus. This dramatic and unexpected utterance from Kennedy has been taken as proof by many that in those several long, silent seconds, when she had finally passed out, she actually saw heaven. 
For a brief time, this brave little girl had seen what is to come after death, and it wasn't as scary as she might have initially thought. It's a very unusual thing for someone so young to slip away, experience something so profound and life-changing, and return to this earth with a renewed sense of purpose and almost godlike level of strength to battle her disease. You can see in Kennedy's eyes that she's not going to let something as silly as bacterial meningitis to get the better of her. She owes it to herself, her family, and her lord to continue fighting and defy those odds. As soon as she opens her eyes, she looks around at her family and asks, I'm here? This begs the question, where else had she been? What else had she seen? Her family reassure her that yes, she's here, but Kennedy still remains a little confused, repeatedly asking, I'm here? I'm here? Her mother, father and grandmother all put her at ease and tell her how glad they are that she's still here. A totally understandable sentiment. Once again, little Kennedy asks for her family's hands to pray, with this seemingly new resolve to survive and battle through. I hope I get better, she says even wondering aloud, when are they going to take this out, referring to the oxygen tube that is linked up to her nose. Her family laugh and smile and reassure her that she'll be all the better soon. It's such a touching thing that the entire family supported each other with love and humor through this incredibly difficult and moving time. Privately, her parents were rightfully worried that they were on the brink of having to witness their daughter die. The chances of someone as small and frail as Kennedy making a recovery are staggeringly small, and the odds really were stacked against her. There were even arrangements made for if their poor daughter lost her battle with bacterial meningitis. It's a morbid way of looking at things, but still something you have to keep in mind. No one should be in their position where they have to bury their child. But you have to think of the practicalities of what comes next, no matter how sad and difficult making these plans may be. But Kennedy's dedication to her faith and her eagerness to pray brings her family a massive amount of comfort in a time when many would be in too much pain to carry on. But still, you really are left wondering what Kennedy actually saw during her moments of unconsciousness. Did she see God? Did she see Jesus? Did the clouds part and she got to briefly visit those pearly gates of heaven? Or was it all part of her hallucinations? A cruel side effect of the disease or the medicine that would hopefully make her feel better? Did the experience feel like the briefest moment to her or did it feel like a lifetime? Whatever it was and however it felt, it gave Kennedy a renewed strength. If she believed to have seen something and it helped her fight on, then it's nothing but a good thing. But let's talk cold hard science for a moment. Hallucinations are all part of a dying experience. It's well documented that seeing things and hearing voices is a common side effect of your brain preparing to shut down. This is why so many people that have died and then been revived say that they saw their life flash before their eyes before they've passed away. Because they actually did as their brain fires all the sinuses and synapses at once to give you one last jolt of life. Every memory, every voice you've ever heard, every bit of information stored in there is activated all at once. But this doesn't sound like what Kennedy experienced. She truly experienced something else, something magical and divine, and something that we may never be able to explain. But this story does in fact has a happy ending. Despite things looking extremely bleak, Kennedy defied all odds, battled on and made a full recovery. As of 2022, she is living a happy and healthy life, free from the horrific disease that hospitalized her as a younger child and living her life to the fullest. She is completely free of the bacterial meningitis that nearly took her life all the way back in 2017. Some will call it a miracle, some will call it divine intervention, some will call it science, but whichever you choose, it can't be denied that the story of Kennedy is an extraordinary, uplifting, and inspiring one. What do you think of Kennedy's story? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.